Something that can make you sound less natural in English is using indirect objects incorrectly. Let me give you some advice. In this sentence, some advice is the thing we are giving. It's what is known as a direct object. The person we are giving it to is you, the indirect object. There are two places where we can put these indirect objects in a sentence, either in between the verb and the direct object, or we can place it after the direct object by adding two or four in front of it. That said, option one is more common and sounds more natural to native English speakers in most situations. For example, technically you could say, I'll give feedback to you, but this sounds a little clumsy. Saying, I'll give you feedback sounds much better. So when does it make sense to put the indirect object after the direct object? From my perspective, there are three main situations, plus an exception, which we'll talk about in a little bit, where it makes sense. The first is when you really want to emphasize the indirect object. This is why it felt awkward in the previous sentence, because we're adding emphasis to you, which is unnecessary. If you and I are having a conversation, of course you're going to give me feedback. There's no need to emphasize it. An example where emphasizing the indirect object does make sense is something like this. I bought a coat for you. By putting you at the end, we are emphasizing how this is a favor that we did for someone. I bought this for you because I'm nice and I like you. There's nothing wrong at all with saying, I bought you a coat. But in this case, we're not drawing any extra attention to the favor, which is fine. It just depends on what you want to focus on. The second situation where it makes sense to put the indirect object last is when the indirect object itself is really long. Like before, this is optional. Here, the CEO and her guests is pretty long, and it flows a little better to put it after the direct object. I offered a cup of coffee to the CEO and her guests. Again, there's nothing wrong with saying I offered the CEO and her guests a cup of coffee. It's simply a matter of preference. The third situation where this option makes sense is if the direct object is a pronoun, specifically it or them. In this case, you must put the indirect object after the direct object. If we look at our sentence about feedback, we saw that it sounds more natural to use option one and put the indirect object in between the verb and the direct object. If we turn feedback into the pronoun it, then it sounds pretty unnatural to say, I'll give you it. Instead, you need to place the indirect object after it and say, I'll give it to you. How do you know if you should use two or four? Typically, we use to when we are giving someone something, as in, she sold it to him. She is giving him whatever she sold. Who did you sell it to? Notice how if we ask who the indirect object is, we use the preposition. You can't say, who did you sell it? Another example is, I'll lend it to him, which means I am going to give him something for a short time. On the other hand, we use for with verbs that imply we are doing something nice, like a favor or something that someone else isn't capable of doing. He cooked it for her. She is just a kid and can't cook. I made it for them. I wanted to be nice. Who did you make it for? I want to know who the them was from the previous sentence. In summary, if you're going to use the pronoun it or them as your direct object, then you need to add two or four in front of the indirect object and move it to the end. If you want to see an example of this in a real conversation, check out my video where we analyze a Michelle Obama interview. Okay, so we've seen that there are two main places to put the indirect object. The majority of the time, try to use option one. It sounds the most natural in the most situations. You can optionally use option two if you want to add emphasis or if the indirect object is long. You must use it if the direct object is it or them. The one thing that you definitely should not do is add two or four in front of the indirect object when it is in between the verb and direct object. Saying, let me give to you some advice does not work at all. Let's try a couple exercises before we look at the exception. Which one of these three options is the most natural?
the first one. It perfectly places the indirect object in between the verb and direct object. The middle option is wrong because it does the one thing you need to avoid at all costs, which is adding two or four to the indirect object when it is in between the verb and the direct object. The last option sounds really awkward because you have two little phrases with prepositions in a row. He was telling about his dog to me. Does this sentence sound natural? Nope. Again, we are committing the cardinal sin of adding the preposition to or for to the indirect object when it comes in between the verb and the direct object. Simply getting rid of the to makes this sound a lot better. Their goal is to present you with new vocabulary from the news. What do you think about this sentence? Does it sound okay? Sure, there's nothing wrong. But again, since putting the indirect object after the direct object is optional in most cases, why not make life easier and just use the more natural and common way? I'm just writing to send you some love during this difficult time. All right, time for the big exception. Even though putting the indirect object in between the verb and direct object is usually the most common and natural way, it does not work with explain, push, carry, donate, describe, take, or suggest. Instead, these do work with the other option, placing the indirect object after the direct object using two or four. The verb that I see the most problems with is explain. You cannot say, can you explain me what it means? This is wrong every time. Instead, you should either say, can you explain what it means to me? Or if it's obvious who needs something explained, you can simply leave out the indirect object. Can you explain what it means? If you are asking the question and you want the explanation, it's already understood that you want someone to explain it to you. So you don't need to specify it. If you want us to explain it to someone else, then sure, include it. Can you explain what it means to her? One extra tricky thing about explain is that if you follow explain with a that clause or a wh question word, you can put the word to in front of the indirect object, even if it comes before the direct object. It is okay to say, I explained to him that he was wrong, or she explained to me how to do it. All right, now that we've explored a good part of the theory, it's time to practice. Here we go. What do you think of this sentence? Is it correct? It is not correct. As we learned, we can't say explain me. Instead, we have to say, I prefer to talk with native speakers because they can explain a lot of things to me. Here's a tricky one. How would you complete this sentence knowing that the indirect object is me, the direct object is the video, and the verb is send? In the past. Notice that the sentence order is a bit different than what we've been looking at. I watched the video, you sent me, and I love it. Even though we change the order of the sentence, the same rules and preferences apply to the indirect object. We can say sent me or sent to me with a slight preference for sent me. Here's another one. Him is the indirect object, he had to do it is the direct object, and explain is the verb. It'll be in the past tense. I already explained to him that he had to do it by Wednesday. This is of course that weird exception with explain where you can use to with the indirect object if it comes before a that clause or wh question word. Next one, give it a shot. I'm going to suggest a new doctor to him. His current one is expensive. Suggest is one of those special verbs where we have to put the indirect object at the end with either two or four. With suggest, it's two because we are giving someone a suggestion, not doing a favor for them or doing something that they aren't capable of doing. There's two challenges in this one. 
First is to decide where to put the indirect object, them, in the first sentence. Second is to decide how to ask a question about who the indirect object is. You'll need to decide which preposition to use, either to or for, and where in the question it should go. I offered them a ride. Who did you offer a ride to? Last one. How many of these are correct? Two of them. Both I sent him an email yesterday and I sent an email to him yesterday are fine. Again, there's a slight preference for I sent him an email, but you can use I sent an email to him if you want to emphasize the to him part. And there you have it, the two ways to use an indirect object. This is a very important topic if you want to sound more natural, as it's one of the more noticeable mistakes. I highly recommend you spend time reviewing this and looking for examples in books, articles, podcasts, or videos to add to your collection. Not sure what I mean by collection? Check out my video on how to improve your vocabulary to find out. If you like this video and want more, be sure to head over to DeliberateEnglish.com where you can get additional tips, tricks, resources, and personalized advice. See you later.